Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew is the first book of the New Testament and I'll be reading from chapter 13 starting at verse 24 and this is what it says. Then Jesus told them another story. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who planted good seed in his field. That night when everyone was asleep his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat and then left. Later the wheat sprouted and the heads of grain grew but the weeds also grew. Then the man's servants came to him and said, You planted good seed in your field. Where did the weeds come from? The man answered, An enemy planted weeds. The servants asked, Do you want us to pull up the weeds? The man answered, No, because when you pull up the weeds, you might also pull up the wheat. Let the weeds and the wheat grow together until the harvest time. At harvest time, I will tell the workers, First gather the weeds and tie them together to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then Jesus told another story. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a man planted in his field. That seed is the smallest of all seeds, but when it grows, it's one of the largest garden plants. It becomes big enough for the wild birds to come and build nests in its branches. Then Jesus told another story. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and hid in a large tub of flour until it made all the dough rise. Jesus used stories to tell all these things to the people. He always used stories to teach them. Pray with me. Jesus, in these old stories this morning, give us ears that we hear not just old stories, but we hear your voice. And that we be changed by it. Here in worship, a space, a space set aside that, that we might come in contact with you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. A little while back, I was reminiscing. My wife calls it daydreaming, but that's not what it is. It's reminiscing. I was thinking about a time when I was a kid that... Um, my father had a garden, and I was recruited to, uh, actually it was forced labor. I was forced labor in that garden. And this garden wasn't, you know, one of those gardens where on the side of your house you might, you know, harvest a tomato every now and then. No, we had to drive to get to this garden. It was a one-acre garden. And my job was to pull the weeds it didn't look like a one-acre garden. It looked like a farm. And I was the forced labor to pull the, the weeds in that farm. And all I could see was weeds because that was my job. That was my only job was to, to pull the weeds. And I had to learn the difference between a, 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 a useful plant and a weed. A weed is something you have to get down and dig and pull and finally pull, get it up. A useful plant, they come up really quickly, really easily. Well, we, we grew all kinds of things. One of the things we grew was okra. Now, I don't know why I had to work so hard for okra. I, 
I, I told my dad at the time, when your vegetables start growing hair, run away. But still, we grew okra. It doesn't make any difference whether it's boiled or pickled or fried. I just, it grows hair, run away. It's, it's okra. I have a friend who says that he ate so much boiled okra growing up that his socks won't stay up now. <laughs> that old slimy stuff. I, but I still, I was out there pulling weeds. I was getting down, I was digging, I was pulling for okra. So you can imagine how excited I was when I read that Jesus says, leave the weeds alone. I wish I had known that when I was a kid. I could have gone to my father and I could have said, Father, Jesus said, <laughs> I, I can't even get it out. It makes me giggle on the inside. I have a life-size picture of me telling my father, Father, Jesus said, leave the weeds alone. Pretty sure it might not have worked. And so I had to read this again. It says, leave the weeds alone. But then after I read it the third time, or maybe the fourth, I don't know, I realized that Jesus isn't talking about weeds here. He's talking about what he talked about more than anything else. And he says it right here at the beginning. The kingdom of heaven is like. That was his number one favorite sermon topic. The kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. He uses those interchangeably. That he came to usher in this new kingdom, this new creation. And over 50 times in the gospel, he tells stories about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And no place does he give a 500-word theme. He said, this is what I mean by the kingdom of God or the kingdom of uh, heaven. No, it was his one, number one favorite sermon topic. And he, he used images. He used stories so we would get an imagination where we would grow eyes and ears to, to look out for it. Not just know it in our heads, but to look out for it, to listen for it. As close as Jesus gets to a definition is in the Lord's Prayer. That... It's written in a form called parallelism. It's the same way that the Psalms are written, that, that a statement's given, and then it's restated in a different way. And that you and I in the Lord's Prayer have been given the, the definition of the kingdom of God, or at least a working, walking definition anyway. It's thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That the kingdom of God comes when his will is done. It's not a place you go when you die because the, the Lord's Prayer goes on to say that kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That God's will, God's rule, God's reign, that it, it, yes, it goes on in heaven, but if we develop those eyes and those ears to see, we'll be able to see that, that the kingdom of God that Jesus ushered in, that it's growing up all around us for all who have eyes to see. And we can take part in it, well, or not, or not, that it's not about weeds, that it's not about weeds, that the story doesn't end with that one story, there's a second story about a man and a third story about a woman, and, and that it's not about the weeds, it's about continuing to plant, continuing to grow, continuing to work even among the weeds. That evil is real. Suffering is real. Heartache is real. But it's not about evil. It's not about suffering. It's not about heartache. It's not about the weeds. It's about this kingdom that Jesus planted right here in the middle of that old kingdom. And it's here for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. It's not about the weeds. That we keep on planting, keep on growing. That we keep on working, even in our family. And that's the first thing that I want to talk about this morning. The Ten Commandments, the first four commandments are about our relationship to God. And the fifth commandment says, honor thy father and mother. That in the Ten Commandments, the, the very first one that doesn't focus on God focuses on the family. To honor father and mother. That we learn to relate to the rest of the world starting off in the family. And very often, very often, the first place 
that we know hurt. The first place that we're wounded. The first place that we know heartache. The first place that we experience weeds, it's in the family. It's in the family. And that even among the weeds, even among the heartache, even among the the wound, that we're called not to focus on the weeds. That we're to draw our attention Attention instead to, to what Jesus is doing and we keep planting, we keep growing, and we keep working. I read a survey that was done, a nation, nationwide survey that was done by the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. And it was a survey that was done throughout the nation that pulled out elements of a strong family. And some of the elements that it said in a strong family were that family members show appreciation to one another. That even when wounded, that even when, when, when hurt, even when there's heartache, that family members show appreciation, that they build one another up. And not only that, another element was that, that strong families have the ability to deal with crisis in a positive manner. In other words, not focusing on the weeds. It doesn't say that, that, that strong families don't have crises. The crisis is, is common to all of us. But they don't focus on the crisis. They focus instead on the growing, on the planting, on the, on the, the working together. Not only that, another one is time is an element of a strong family, that they invest their time in one another. A high degree of commitment is another element of a strong family. Good communication patterns, that's another one. And one that we might not have expected is that strong families have a high degree of religious orientation. Might not have expected that from a a state university doing a nationwide study, but a a high degree of religious orientation. In other words, that it's in the family. That we set aside time to practice what we say we believe. Not just as individuals, but as a family. That we set aside time to practice what we say we believe. To pray for each other, not just think about each other, but to pray for each other, to to pray with each other. A time set aside for worship with one another in a family. A time, a space set aside where we might meet God and continue planting, continue growing, continue working in the family. It's not about weeds. It's not about weeds. It's about what God can do in a a family. Not only that, it's not about the weeds. It's it's about the, the planting and the growing and the working, even in the stranger. I understand there's a legend that's been told for many years that happened in Princeton, New Jersey. It took place at a time when Albert Einstein lived in Princeton, and he was walking along the sidewalk one day when he walked in front of a hotel. Rich widow pulled her car up and popped the trunk, mistook Albert Einstein for a bellboy, asked if he could help her with her bags, take them to the lobby. Well, Einstein saw that she needed help, reached in her trunk, took her bags to the lobby, to which she, he, she gave him a, a healthy tip. He put it in his pocket and continued walking down the sidewalk, unraveling the mysteries of the universe. (laughs) Well, I think we all like stories like that where, where greatness goes undercover. I think we all like stories like that. Jesus told stories like that. And it wasn't Albert Einstein who went undercover. It was Jesus. And it still is Jesus who goes undercover. Matthew 25 says, in the hungry in the thirsty, in the stranger, in the naked, in the sick, and in the imprisoned. That those very folks that 
others might look on as weeds, that they matter to God. And if they matter to God, they, they, they must matter to us. They have to matter to us. And that we have to, to keep and, and focusing our eyes, our ears on what matters to God, the stranger. And that we plant and that we grow and that, that we work. That we put our little with God's much and we reach out to those who, who matter to God. And here at Roswell United Methodist, that's exactly what you've been doing. And I want to invite you to continue to focus, to continue to plant, to continue to grow, continue to work in reaching out to the stranger. You've done it through job networking. Those who are looking for jobs, thousands, thousands have been here. And even during the pandemic and, and even now virtually, we're able to, to help those folks looking for jobs. My neighbor's pantry, over the last year during the pandemic, over a thousand people a week have been fed through our neighbor's pantry right here at this church, tutoring children in local schools who speak English as a second language. That we've continued to do that virtually and in person to help those who are struggling through English as a second language, Wesley Woods, that over the years we've put our little with God's much and we've, we've given more than a million dollars to help folks who've outgrown their financial resources, outlived their financial resources. And over 1,800 people, 80% of whom need your help and mine, you've reached out. I want to invite you to continue to develop those eyes, to develop those ears where we, where we put our little with God's much. And then it, it refocuses our eyes, to our ears, not only to see that going on here in church, but in the community as well as we leave this place. Last week, we received a call on Saturday from a police officer. He turned to this place of community and faith. Because there was a 17-year-old girl who'd been left stranded here in Roswell. She was from Michigan. And by law, she couldn't get a, a motel room by herself, being 17 years old. And that's when this church rallied. We put our little with God's much. And those who had helped with family promise knew what to do. It was almost as if it was a second nature. Because they developed eyes, they developed ears, and... And they surrounded this 17-year-old and provided a place. A place of community and faith. A place for her to stay until her parents could come from Michigan and get her. The weeds. We focus not on the weeds but on what God can do. When we put our little with his much... And we reach out. We develop eyes and ears to see what matters to God and let them know that they matter to us as well. I heard a story, well, read a story about a, <laughs> a woman from Scotland who sent her son to university for the first time. Her son Donald entered into Oxford University, but she was unsure how... Donald, the young Scottish boy, would deal among what she considered the uppity Brits. After a week or so, she gave him a call, said, Donald, how are things going in university? He said, oh, mother, you wouldn't believe it. These Brits, they're, they're a rude and a noisy people. She said, you don't say. He said, my neighbor in the, in the dorm on one side of me, all night long, he bangs his head against the wall. She said, what do you do? He said, well, that's not the half of it. My neighbor on the other side, all night long, he screams and curses profanities. She said, what do you do? He said, well, I do the best I can. I continue to sit here quietly playing my bagpipes. <laughs> we have a tendency to think it's everybody else, don't we? And that's natural. That's the way weeds grow up within us. It's our natural state to grow weeds. 
weeds that, that tend to think it's everybody else and, and not us. Weeds that tend to point to somebody else's problems and, and not our own. And that's why Jesus came. He, to take those weeds, all those things that would, would destroy us, to take the sin, to take the shame, to take the pride, the self-centeredness, and to nail it to the cross. To take away its power once and for all. And he rose from the grave. That we might develop his eyes. Develop his ears. That we might continue planting. We might continue growing. We might continue working. And know that it's not about weeds. That we invest our lives in a relationship with him where he continues to to live his life through us. It's what the apostle Paul was saying to this this church in Philippi. He couldn't be with them and he, he wanted to make sure that the risen Christ continued to grow in this church, that they continued to plant, they continued to grow, they continued to work, that they continued to give praise and worship to God. And so in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, he said, I'm confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day Jesus comes again. That he was confident, not in their ability, not in their inherent goodness, but in the work that the risen Christ, that the Spirit of the risen God working through them might continue. And that spirit is available to you this morning. It may be that you're in that place right now that during the pandemic you've had a tendency to focus on weeds. Well, it might have been the weeds in someone else's life. We've certain, certainly had a, a steady diet of voices Telling us to point to somebody else and and where they've been doing wrong. And we've developed a culture around it over the years. Oh, we're a culture that's fallen in love with judge shows. Judge Wapner, Judge Judy, Judge Joe Brown, Judge Miles Lane. There's judge after judge after judge where we get to sit back. And that's what reality shows are about anyway. We get to sit back and look at somebody else's craziness and we can point to where they're wrong. The weeds in their lives and we really don't have to look at ourselves at all. Jesus came, not so we would look at the weeds in someone else's life, but we'd look at ourselves and confess, yeah, that the natural state of our lives leads us away from God and that he died on the cross to do something about those weeds, to do something about that natural state, to nail it on the cross and to take away its power once and for all. He rose again to live his life through us, that we might continue working, that we might continue planning, that we might live in a different way, in a way that our lives are focused on him first and not on the weeds, that we might develop eyes that look that ears that hear his kingdom all around us, that we give praise, that we give thanks, we give our lives, our lives to follow him. This morning it may be that you've never invited the Holy Spirit to make his home in your heart. You've never set aside a, a place, a place where, where he might have his strength, his way, his, his will with you. And this morning, that, that's what you want to do. Because you know the natural state of your life has it's led you far off the path and far away from him. Well, I want to pray with you now. Join with me in prayer. Jesus, this day, It's a day for a new creation, a new start, a new kingdom. Not just out there, but to come alive within us. 
and that we might develop new eyes for this new creation, this new kingdom. We might develop ears and we might begin to see your hand moving in and around us and, and to you we give our, our praise and our worship, our lives, our planting, our growing, our working. And it might start now, this day. Lord, we confess to you the ways that we've tried to focus on other folks and where they've gone wrong. We confess to you the ways that that we've said things, done things that we ought not to have said and done. And we've left undone things that we certainly should have. And we ask for the power of your Holy Spirit to come and, and change us that we might, well, the word that you use is repent. That we might change the whole of our attitude, the whole of ourselves, because it's it's your Holy Spirit that lives through us. That you might give us eyes, eyes for you, eyes for what matters to you, that we might develop eyes for the stranger. And Lord, that we might start in our very own families, not focusing on the weeds, but instead, setting aside a time, a place, prayer, that we can plant and grow and work and help our families grow strong. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image. He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.